A couple of months ago, we made a video about surprising celebrity cars, and you guys seem to like it a lot. So, we decided to come back for round two. Only this time, we're focusing on the world of sports folks, aka superstar exercisers, aka professional, professional athletes. athletes. Now, pro athletes are known for having expensive, fancy, flashy cars, but most of the time those cars are just G-Wagons or Bentleys or whatever. So we dug a little deeper and found some genuinely surprising cars owned by world-renowned athletes. We've got everything from a home-built Subaru, a 350Z built for a literal giant, and even a car from the year 3000. Hey, this is everything you need to know to get up to speed on this episode of D-D-D-D-D-D-U-S. A big thanks to Omaze for sponsoring today's episode. We know you little freaks like letting your buff horses loose, and now you can let all 591 buff hearse purrs loose with the 2020 Audi RS Q8 thanks to Omaze. That's right, you could own a twin turbo V8 German performance monster. Plus, because Omaze is extra awesome, $20,000 cold hard cash. Carbon fiber, Alcantara. Things luxurious AF, baby. What's even better is that every donation supports my friends at the Ronald Reagan Medical Center at UCLA. Uh, that's where I went when I had my heart attack last year. So head on over to omaze.com slash donut and enter for your chance to win. Stone Cold Steve Austin. When it comes to cars and wrestling, it don't get much cooler than Stone Cold Steve Austin. I mean, the dude crashed his own funeral with a monster truck. He drove a Zamboni into the squared circle. I guess what I'm saying is he's got a thing for badass vehicles and making statements. And with a net worth of like uh, a gajillion dollars, he's got a pretty flexy car collection. Range Rover, check. McLaren, yup. Private friggin' jet. Not a car, but definitely a flexy vehicle for sure. But without a doubt, in our opinion, the best car in his fleet is a 1988 Dodge Ram Charger. Ram Charger, Ram Charger, Ram Charger. Ram Charger! Why is this old truck from the 80s cooler than a private jet, you may be asking? Well, it ain't just an old truck from the 80s. The Ram Charger was Dodge's response to the Ford Bronco. It got a shorter wheelbase than the Ram and a really cool looking extended roof going all the way back. This whole roof design set the tone for modern SUVs plus the back bench was removable so you could get all the utility of a pickup and the sportiness of a rugged Froder plus it's got the coolest name of any truck ever Ram Charger he kept the original 318 cubic inch motor but added a three and a half inch lift kit to invoke more middle finger vibes the coolest part is that he bought it at an estate sale for $4,500. Now, I really like to imagine Stone Cold Steve Austin at an estate sale, just like surrounded by old people, browsing through dressers and old pots and stuff. He opens the garage and he's like, Hey, how much for this truck? They're like, I don't know, 5,500 bucks. How about 4,500? Yeah? Yeah, we can do that. Great. And that's the bottom line, because Stone Cold said so. Kevin Durant. Lots of athletes have Camaros. James Harden has one, LeBron has one, Stone Cold has one, Guy Fieri has one. Yes, he is an athlete, he's a food athlete. A Camaro itself isn't a very surprising car, sure, but what's surprising about Kevin Durant's Camaro is that it's just so red. Like, really, really red. Now I gotta respect the basketballs on KD to do this to a Camaro. He's like ketchup on a hot dog kind of guy. Sorry, Chicago. The fact is, KD just loves red. Just about every one of his signature shoes is available in an all red colorway. Sometimes you just gotta match your kicks to your whips. In fact, the color of the valve cover on my Golf is from a pair of Nike Air Max 95s. Oh, by the way, we're gonna have some behind the scenes updates on the Golf on the Donut Underground. No pressure, but feel free to hit that join button for more information. Guys, we are not going behind a paywall. We're just throwing a bunch of stuff on there for the super fans that we can't put on the main channel because it would get like 400 views. Plus, you get like a sticker. Oh, and access to the Discord. Now, it could be argued that he went a little overboard with the red. But to that, I say, Nah. When you're an Olympic gold medalist and the former rookie of the year, you get to flex however the heck you want to flex. So flex on, KD. Flex on. Ronda Rousey. 
The saying, as much accord as you can afford, rings true for every income level. And UFC champ turned movie star turned WWE superstar Ronda Rousey is no exception. Because believe it or not, a Honda Accord is exactly what Ronda Rousey used to drive. And, more surprisingly, and sadder, where she used to live. Now, before Rousey was executing standing reverse katagurumas on her opponents in the ring, she was driving back and forth to judo classes in a 2005 Honda Accord LX. Yeah, sure, it's just a stock Accord, but what makes this car special is the story behind it. Now, at one point, Ronda had to live in the car just to make ends meet. Now, obviously her career began to take off and she would soon be able to trade in the modest four cylinder sedan for a car collection that would include Corvettes, BMWs, a big ass Ford F-350 and an Escalade because sometimes you want a, your F-350 to have a roof on the back. Rousey sold the car at an auction a few years ago and the winning bidder got a jackpot of Ronda Rousey memorabilia, even though this list kind of sounds like a bunch of stuff that you'd find in a serial killer's car. We're talking about a jump rope, black belt, a glove, a single boot, a single high heel, one flip flop, you know, evidence. What was happening to all of her other shoes? Was it like her kicking foot and she would wear out one of the shoes quicker than the other? So many questions, so little time. Diego Nahara. If you go outside of Donut HQ on the right day, you might notice that we here appreciate a good Nissan. We made a whole series about it uh, with me, Aaron, Nolan, and Zach. Uh, we're all Z boys. Zach owns a 240. Felipe drives a Z. Joe drives a Z. We're a bunch of regular Nissan heads. So whenever we discover that a famous person drives one, we get a little warm and fuzzy. On the insides. Like when we found out in another episode of The D-List that rapper YBN Namir drives a 350Z. If you haven't seen that episode, check it out. And shouts to YBN Namir for commenting on the video. Real recognize real. We would love to have you on the pop-up headlight song. Hit us up. Coming soon. So when we found out that 26-year-old pro skater Diego Najira Najera. drives a 240SX, we had to put it on the list. The crazy thing about this S chassis is that it's so clean. Now, if you ever see a 240SX in the wild, they're usually clapped out in someone's driveway with a half inch layer of dust on them and a front mount intercooler on a naturally aspirated KA motor and no front bumper. But not this bad boy. No, because this bad boy's good boy. Because this boy's a clean boy. He loves the car so much that he used a picture of it on his first pro skateboard deck. Pretty, pretty, pretty nice flex. Joe has your deck. Hulk Hogan, brother! How can you make the Viper, a car literally built only for speed, any more badass? <coughs> you make it Hulk Hogan, that's how! By the 1990s, pro wrestler and quite a human cartoon character, Hulk Hogan had become a pop culture icon. The Hulkster had movies. He had a Saturday morning cartoon. He had a TV show about a boat. He had action figures. There was a Hulk Hogan blender. He even had a pasta restaurant called Pasta Mania. Pasta Mania! And you might expect a guy like Hulk Hogan to drive a pretty Hulk Hogan-y car, but even still, you might not expect him to drive something this Hulk Hogan-y. Before we even get to the paint job, the Viper SR1 was an insane car in stock form. It had a monster 8 liter V10. It's got 400 horsepower. It's got no traction control, no stability control. No freaking anti lock brakes. This thing was more dangerous than a leg drop to the dome. Add the drop top and the whole Comania red and yellow paint job, and you, my friend, have reached the most wrestling car ever imagined. Where classic rock plays on every station and your greasy tan lasts all year long. Where every time a song comes on, you know a specific guy is going to come punch you in the face. Daniel Norris! As we've seen earlier in this list, the early goings of an athlete's career can be so humble that they have to live in their car to keep the dream alive. But once they accomplish said dreams and the moolah starts rolling in, there's no way they'd live in a car by choice, right? Right? Well, you'd be half right. And half dead wrong! Major League Baseball pitcher Daniel Norris decided to live in his van after signing his multi-million dollar pro baseball contract. Whatever floats your boat or your van. I'm not, whatever, dude, cool. 
Since 2011, Daniel's been living in his 1978 Volkswagen bus. Now, if you're going to live the van life, this is one of the best ones to do it in. If you've never slept in a van, you've never slept a real wink in your life. Trust me, you should try it. Now, this particular vehicle, Van Cave, has built-in shelves and cabinets, a stove, a surprising amount of storage, and sleeping room to catch some VWZs. Now, Dan says that instead of fame and luxury, he'd rather be known for being the best baseball player he can be. Swing away, Danny. Swing away, Danny boy. Oh, Danny boy, the vans, the vans are calling. Your air coat bus is not a car, but a hole. The Mon Augustus. Now, it's not uncommon for celebrities to have classic cars in their collection to pull out for a special occasion. But most of the time, those cars sit in a garage with someone paid to take care of them while they drive their Tesla or their G-Wagon or their Range Rover as an everyday driver. But for WNBA star Simone Augustus, every day is a special occasion. Simone rotates a fleet of classic Chevys that you could pull up to MacArthur Park on a Sunday morning with no problem. Now, she's considered one of the best players in the WNBA. So why should the ball and stop when she leaves the court? Why not ball out when you're going to hit Trader Joe's or when you got to run and pick up your dry cleaning? I know I would. I do. None of my cars are practical. In fact, none of them are running. I drove my girlfriend's car here today. Simone's favorite of the bunch and her everyday driver is a candy blue 1968 Chevy Impala. Simone says that it's her favorite for sentimental reasons. It's the car that got her dad and her uncle into classic cars. While her cars are low, Simone is not. She's six feet tall. She's six feet tall. Jackie Chan. Question, would you consider Jackie Chan an athlete? Well, Max does. He threatened to sue me if I didn't include Jackie on this list. I can't afford to keep him off this list because I can't afford to keep getting sued and I don't know why his pockets are so deep. Who is funding this endless litigation, Max? So yeah, Jackie Chan's an athlete. Anywho, Jackie Chan has a ton of cars. He's got a Lambo, he's got a Bentley, he's got this hilarious custom minivan from one of his movies. He's got a Subaru STI, but what you might not know if you haven't seen basically any Jackie Chan movie, is that Jackie Chan has a soft spot. What am I saying? He's Jackie Chan, he has no soft spots, he's pure muscle. But if he did have any soft spots, the only soft spot he would have is one for Mitsubishis. He's got a bunch of them. He probably didn't notice because they're stashed in his secret garage that was built from an old abandoned factory. Is Jackie Chan Batman? Is Batman an athlete? Jackie's collection is nuts. He's got a 3000 GT prototype. He's got a Pajero Turbo that turns into a boat. You know what, I think Jackie Chan is Batman. But of all his Mitsubishi toys, he's particularly fond of the Lancer Evo because duh, who isn't? It's an amazing car. And by fond of, I mean he has a limited edition Evo 9 named after him. Only 50 of the Jackie Chan Evos were made. That's like if Volkswagen made a Pumphrey 502 edition Golf. Hey, we heard you like it. We'll put your name on it. I used to think that Jackie Chan was just a master of Hong Kong cinema, but I guess we got to add JDM car enthusiast and probably most likely the actual Batman to the list. Shaquille O'Neal. Shaq is a man that wears many hats. Basketball hat, commentator hat, rap hat, genie hat, video game hat, DJ hat, sheriff's hat, Bill Gates hat, but our favorite hat that Shaq wears is a Z-Boy hat, sort of. Shaq's got a bunch of cars, all right, including this ridiculous truck that we covered in a previous episode. But when we found out that Shaq also owns a Vader, we had to throw it on this list. James, what is a Vader? I'm glad you asked. Vader's are kit cars based on the Infiniti G35, which shares a platform with the 350Z. So therefore, Shaq drives a 350Z just like me and Nolan. So basically, I'm a 15-time NBA All-Star. But the craziest part about the big Aristotle's Vader is that it's customized to fit his seven-foot-plus stature. Shaq and his Florida-based design team basically rebuilt the entire front end and seating area to accommodate Shaq Diesel's frame, which means extra-large pedals. And uh, they moved the front seat to basically the back seat. He's literally a backseat driver. I don't, what would that be like? Like, the windshield's so far away from you. 
We all know Bucky Lassick is a skateboarding legend. He was one of the original characters in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, and he's won just about every skateboard medal there is. But there's a saying, with age comes cage. So Bucky just straight up decided to become a professional rally car driver for Subaru in 2012? Sick. So with a rally background, it makes sense that Bucky has a couple Subarus in his fleet. But the most notable one is a GC8 called the bucket. Get it? And what I love about this thing is that he bought it for 800 bucks and built it from the ground up. He installed a badass wide body kit, swapped in a newer STI motor and a bunch of other stuff. He has a ton of videos about it on his YouTube channel, including a video where he went on a drive with Jesse and Zach Job. I guess my phone was off. The bucket is truly built, not bought, and I think that's so cool, and I respect the heck out of it. And now we've reached the holy grail of what the f is that? And how do I get one of athletes' cars? The number one car on this list was built for pro wrestler turned pro actor, Big Johnny Can't See Me Cena. It was built to compete in the gumball rally against the actual Batmobile. I'm not kidding. Google it. Jackie, I don't mean to blow up your spot. Please don't come beat me up. And like its owner, the car is equal parts badass and ridiculous. Feast your eyes on the Incinerator. This thing is basically a, a stock C7 Corvette with an insane looking body kit, but this is John Cena. He's all about the illusion, the razzle dazzle. Cena's only words of direction to the Parker Brothers design team who built the car was, make it look like it's from the year 3000. Now the Parkers took the ball and ran with it. Sports ref. The 24 inch wheels are meant to look like jet engines. The giant glass windshield with the you can't see me tint opens up like a clamshell. And oh yeah, uh, did I mention it's got flamethrowers? Uh, did I mention that there's eight of them? Those aren't exhaust pipes, that's not two-step. Them's flamethrowers that fire on command. Why? Cause F you, that's why. And his name is John C. If you wanna know more fun, surprising, awesome celebrity cars, check out this episode of The D-List. And if you haven't seen High Low yet, you're really missing out. We build two 350Zs, one expensive one and one cheap one. Uh, here's a link to that. Follow me on Instagram at James Pumphrey. Follow Donut at Donut Media. Thanks for liking and subscribing and commenting. I love you. <laughs>